This conference will now be recorded. So in previous session, we understood whenever I want to make a uh, remote site calling, nothing but when you want to make a web service call to any remote site or a remote server, simply I have to add remote site setting first. Then when I was doing this integration, I got some kind of error where it is specifying like something invalid session ID. So now let me show that uh, part. Okay, I was getting invalid session ID. So now what I need to do to handle it. That means before to making this call, I should have some mechanism. Okay, which I'm going to as a pre-request step. Okay, so I need to access session. So I should log into my server. I should get the session. Then that session I should pass in this call. Then once I got the session, I need to pass with my web service soap call. So now we'll see how I am going to get the session. Okay. So to get the session, what we can do, there are different APIs, like when I'm using this SOAP mechanism, there are different API or uh, still provided by Salesforce, which we can use to do it. So let me go to the server. Let me see if I log into server first. Uh, let me log into server. Devices at the red server.com, which we have uh, connected before. Okay, so in this server, let me see what kind of OSTL or what kind of API are there, which will help me to connect. Okay, so whenever you are doing first time in this integration, you may face this kind of uh, blockers and you can work on that. So if you go to setup in the setup, if I search API simply, let me search the API here. See, under the integration, in the classic, you have using uh, Lightning, you get from under integration. And if you go to the classic, let me show you uh, where you'll get it. Let me show you the classic mode. In the classic, the options will be different, but it is under the under the name of API but uh, which you can get in different way. Let me go to classic and show you how we are going to get it. Let me move to classic from here. Okay, so in the classic, if you go to setup, you may use lightning or classic, wherever you want, you can use for integration. If you search API, you see under develop, you will get API. Both are the same thing. So how it comes to here from setup and then under setup there is a develop under develop there is API we can get a different kind of still here. So same thing we can get from lightning which come under integration. Okay, there are different APIs or we still provided by Salesforce which we can work on this to do some kind of activity. So what kind of activity we can do with the help of that and what are the basic difference among them? We'll discuss everything and how we are going to use that. That also we'll see. So when I'm going to this API, see under integration, you have one option API. If you go to this API, we have different APIs like uh, uh, enterprise still, like partner still. See, we have something called enterprise still. And something called partner still. So Salesforce we still or WSTL allow you to easily integrate Salesforce with application and to build new application to work with Salesforce. Okay, so we can download this WSTL which one you want, and then with the help of this WSTLs, I can uh, get my session information which we need uh, because of this integration. So when I'm setting up, it's showing me invalid session session ID. So I can take that WSTL file. I can write some some kind of code or something I'll do on the top of that we to see how I am going to access my system. So to understand that, let's discuss. There are two different kind of whistle I'm going to talk right now. One we can say as a partner whistle and one we can say enterprise whistle. So out of these two still any whistle you can take. So from the server, you can take this whistle 
and share with client so from where you will take from the server will take for which application you want to get session to that application now i want to connect to server so i want to get session of server so that my call will be accepted so for that reason from the server i will take partner will tell or enterprise will tell depending on my scenario what i want to do to understand that let's under to understand what is the basic difference between these two it's a very common question for all uh, like what is the difference between partner will tell and enterprise will tell okay so when i am saying what partner will tell what it is mean so now we'll see like both are both are the like for integration if you want to get session i can use any of these things so partner you still is nothing but it's like a loosely typed okay so what it means okay so if i want to uh, make any changes in my salesforce configuration okay then my still is not going to change it's a completely static it is not uh, uh, forcefully binding with my salesforce configuration or salesforce schema like if i want to make a change in object level then my use still going to change no not at all so that moment it's in the partner still so it's completely static type which does not change if modification made to your configuration okay and this partner will still when you create it completely reflect against any configuration on the salesforce okay and it's loosely typed and uh, basically we use partner we still uh, for customers partners and uh, isv partners who the people want to build some integration across multiple salesforce org, regardless of how many objects are there how many field are there regardless of anything if you want to build some integration across multiple or you can work with partner we still simply and same way when you talk enterprise we still it's strongly typed we still so which going to tie to specific configuration of salesforce that means if you change your configuration in salesforce if you add a object if you change anything your still going to change completely you have to share a new still with the client who connected with enterprise still so it is not a static and the still changes if you change your org uh, any configuration then your enterprise is still going to change completely so basically we we use this enterprise still when some customer want to build an integration to a to specific salesforce org okay with their salesforce org it's enterprise level okay so one company integrating to my company in enterprise level if there's any changes in my enterprise level we should notify them because these changes happen and this is my uh we still new we still changes have to take in okay so it's totally strongly typed with my schema level or with my config level so it's enterprise still so it depends what kind of uh, integration you want to set so you want to set uh, loosely typed or strongly typed based on that we can decide and we can take partner still or enterprise still for my case like if you see in the server i have different kind of still so now out of this still which one you want you can take for my example i want to establish a loosely typed still for the customer and partners and isps so simply i want to take the partner register so i can click on this link generate partner whistle so once i click you can see this whistle came now i can save this whistle and i can share with my client so simply i just get the name as my partner whistle okay so to understand more details let's server partner whistle the name i have given and i accept it now the whistle what i got this whistle i will share to my client then what client will do so to establish a session between my client and server i am going to use my partner whistle once you have partner whistle what we need to do same thing we have to generate apex class okay so now if you see here we have to get the sessions authentication parameter to do that in the second step what we need we took my 
partner who is tell from my server okay and that partner will tell what you do as in the previous session we usually uh, generate the uh, we still and sets then we generate the apex class in the client once we get the we same mechanism will follow will generate the apex class in my client side how we'll do we all knows that so simply in the client side go to my apex class then from apex class i'm in the client side now you can see it's, it's in the income into window so i click on generate from whistle what is my whistle click on choose file i took my partner whistle here i click on open so now i click on parse wsdl so now it will parse this partner as my self uh, standard so it's parsed if there is no error then it will allow to create this access, create these classes so again depending on the size of the whistle uh, different classes may come okay so if you want you can give the name or you can go default name i am going to default name i'll focus on this partner so first first come so now i click on generate apex code now you see okay very nice some kind of exception happens and whenever you are going to uh, parse any whistle maybe from self source or maybe from anywhere else you may get this kind of exception i will talk in general in generally what different kind of exceptions or what different kind of issue you may get when you are going to parse whistle so this is one type of issue you see so it's saying apex generation failed because of unsupported schema type any type so any type is a type which is not supported whenever you get this issue okay as a common issue what you can do go to your whistle file simply just edit it okay and find out wherever you have any type simply you search here let's see the error message any type just copy this any type search wherever i have any type see there are many places i have any type so wherever you have type as any type will change it to what will change will change to type as access to string simply because any type is a type which is not supported okay see i can uh, replace it okay wherever i have any type i replace to string type okay i don't have anything else let's find next nothing so see simply whenever this is one common error you get you may get whenever you get this error if any type when you are passing schema and you're if you're passing wsql and you find any type some kind of schema type not supported we can convert to accordingly to some specific type so i changed any type to string if any time you see any type error simply change to string now let me do this same process once again okay so if many many errors coming that's good so that you can understand how i'm going to fix error one by one i just select server partner wisdom i click on pass wsdl okay now these are the classes simply i click on generate apex code okay so now let me see wow now nicely there is no more errors my class got generated but don't worry what are the common errors usually comes i will explain all in detail okay and how to resolve that also i'll tell so these are different classes got generated as i said uh, i'll have my service class like partner soap com, and also there is a async class two classes you generate. generate. you can see here this is for asynchronous this is for my synchronous web service call so let me click on done so i am ready with class next we'll see how this class going to help me to invoke some kind of logic to access the session from the server thank you stay tuned for next session we'll see how we are going to use this to access my session thank you